the 10 worst MVP choices in MLB history. This is only MVP choices since 1967. Prior to this, there wasn't a Cy Young winner in each league. So oftentimes the MVP would be a starting pitcher. At 10, Don Mattingly won the 1985 American League MVP over George Brett. You will notice some themes in this list. One of which is that RBIs were extremely overvalued in the past. And indeed, Mattingly led the American League in RBIs that season. However, George Brett's OPS was 80 points higher. And the guy who I really think should have won the MVP was Ricky Henderson, who had pretty much the same OPS as Mattingly, plus Plus he had 80 stolen bases. At 9, 1987 American League MVP where George Bell won over Alan Trammell. Bell and Trammell had nearly the same OPS, but Bell was a corner outfielder, and Trammell was a shortstop who also stole 21 bases in 23 attempts. Trammell was clearly the more complete player, which is why he had an 8.2 war in comparison to Bell's 5. Oh, and somehow this season, Wade Boggs came in 9th place in MVP voting, despite having an OPS nearly 1,000 points higher than both of them. At 8, our first relief pitcher on this list, Raleigh Fingers, winning the 1981 American League MVP. MVP. I don't care how good you are as a closer, you're not convincing me you're the MVP over Ricky Henderson with a 408 on base percentage and 56 stolen bases in a just 108 game shortened season. At 7, Boog Powell wins the 1970 American League MVP over Tony Oliva. But really, they should have gone to Carl Yastrzemski. Carl Yastrzemski was better in every offensive category other than RBIs. I'm not kidding. This is something we saw way too often back then. At 6, in 2012, Miguel Cabrera winning the American League MVP over Mike Trout. Honestly, I totally get why he won the MVP. He was the first batter to have a triple crown since Carl Yastrzemski in 1967. However, it just so happens that Trout had a better season. He accumulated an insane 10.5 war in just 139 games in comparison to Cabrera's 7.1 war. He played tremendous defense in center field while also stealing 49 bases. And after Cabrera, he was clearly the second best hitter in the American League that year. And all of this was extremely impressive considering Mike Trout was a rookie that year. At five, imagine a first baseman not leading the league in any offensive category, yet still winning the MVP. That was Steve Garvey, the National League MVP, in 1974. Yet that same season, Mike Schmidt, who finished 6th in MVP voting, beat Garvey in every statistical category except for batting average and hits. At 4, no matter how good of a relief pitcher you are, winning an MVP while throwing only 80 innings is nuts. In 1992, Dennis Eckersley should not have won the MVP over Kirby Puckett. At 3, Juan Gonzalez winning the American League MVP in 1996. A-Rod should have won this award, and if not him, Griffey. They were both better hitters and more complete players at more important defensive positions. And not that war was considered back then, but Gonzalez had a 3 3.8 war. Compare that to A-Rod's 9.4 or Griffey's 9.7. At 2, 1995 American League MVP Mo Vaughn over Albert Bell. This is so egregious. Bell was not a very likable player, I understand that. But his stats were clearly better. More runs, more hits, 11 more home runs, the same RBI total, a higher on base percentage, and he had a slugging percentage that was 115 points higher. And if you're thinking maybe Mo Vaughn was on the better team, nope. Cleveland went 144 that year for the best record in baseball. Also, for what it's worth, Edgar Martinez had a really good case that season, too. He led the league with an 1107 OPS. But at one, in 2002, Miguel Tejada winning the American League MVP over Alex Rodriguez. Considering both of these players played the same position, it's very easy to compare their numbers. Which is what makes this so baffling. Who had more runs? Home runs? RBIs? More stolen bases? And who was better defensively? Alex Rodriguez. This was entirely because Miguel Tejada played on the better team.